Hi, I'm CC, and six months ago I released the first part of our train network series where I showed off a really cool tra automatic train network that I designed with my friends. And in that video I showed you a design for a roundabout. Now we actually have a brand new design which uses up a lot less space and is also a lot easier to program. So let's start by doing a quick little demonstration of how it works. It functions effectively the same way as the previous roundabout where if you have no ticket, it will go to the left. But if you include a ticket, in this case, I'm just gonna use a light blue terracotta, it should go forward. And then if you put in a different ticket, in this case, the pink terracotta, it will go to the right. Look at that. So a few nice improvements over the old design is that this design is actually completely silent. Like there is, like, it's, it's inaudible. It's honestly kind of eerie. <laughs> but also, the footprint is mostly underneath the rail, with only a little bit sticking out the side. And you can also program it to have different default directions. So, for example, this one over here, I've set it up so if there's no ticket, it will go to the forward direction by default. And then if you put in the blue ticket, it will go to the right as normal, like so. But if you put in a green ticket, this will now be the way of going to the left. And the same for this one over here, but this one will just go to the right by default. Just for the sake of giving a little bit of context for anyone who is new, I'll give you a quick idea of how it works. Basically, this little purple circuit over here is an item filter that will read the ticket from the minecart. If it has a matching ticket, it will then toggle a crafter down below, which sends a signal over to the track switches which will send the car into the correct direction but then to reset the system back to its default state over here we have this uh, pulse extender and when a minecart goes over it and then just heads off on its own once it times out it will reset the system back to its default position and if you'd like any more context you can check out the playlist down below which is a compilation of all of the rail videos i've done so far with tutorials in them and while you're down there maybe do some do a little do a little subscribe okay let's go to tutorial time so this is the basic pattern we want to start with you want to have this five by five square in the middle with the two lanes on each of the sides and then these rails in the corner in this shape here then in the four gaps around the middle put in some powered rails like so, to make a central loop of sorts. So something I should note is that this is going to be a left-handed design, meaning you're always on the left-hand side of the rail. But if you want to have this set up with right-handed drive instead, all you need to do is just flip all of the redstone that I show you. So I've marked out the four tracks we want to pay attention to with gold when you're setting up a left-handed drive system. Basically, these are the four rails that will be turning to get you to your designated destination. So underneath each of these blocks, I want to place down a target block with an air block above it, like so. And then on top of each of these target blocks, just place down a redstone torch. Now, up top you'll see that two of the tracks have stayed the same, while two of them have switched the direction. Now, the reason that has happened is because of rail directionality. Basically, rails will always try and pull to the south and the east, but we don't want the rails to be like this, we want them to all be in this specific pattern. So the way that you fix that is just go down below, break out the torch here, put a redstone torch on the side of the target block with a block above it, and then a torch on the side underneath the block, and that will set the track back to its default state. Then just do the same on the other one as well. And I also want to go about powering these powered rails here, so just go underneath each of these and put down a lever. These levers won't interfere with any of the redstone down below. So now I want to set up the wiring to connect up all of the track switches. So on the side of the target blocks, I want to place down a little diagonal bit of blocks here, like that, with a little tail sticking out there. Then just put redstone dust onto all of those. I want to repeat the same design around each of the sides, but I'm going to be switching up the blocks to different colored terracottas so we can color coordinate the wires. Obviously, though, you don't have to do that if you do not wish to. I just find it easier to keep track of everything. So now, with that same pattern on all four sides, on top of this redstone dust here, place down a block here, and then one also to the side, and then put one other block here next to this target block. Then, just place down a redstone dust here, with a repeater facing into this block. Then, just repeat the same design on all four sides. And that is all of the wiring in. So now we can set up 
the rails going along to the item filters. So now let's extend the rail here on the left hand side. I want to first start by placing down three andesite blocks, then put a detector rail with two regular rails like so. Then I want to put another block with two on the inside here with hoppers facing directly into those. Then just remove those two blocks and you can put some rails on top of these two hoppers. And then optionally you can add three more blocks here with powered rails. These aren't 100% necessary but I recommend having them as it will get your speed up before entering the roundabout and making sure you don't slow down in here causing any problems. And then I want to extend the other side to meet the end and just mirror the rails over to here. And then underneath I can quickly put some levers to power the rails. These levers won't interact with any of the redstone. And now I just want to do the same on all four of the sides. And that is all of the rails in place. So now let's get on to making the item filters. So on the outside bit of the hoppers, I want to place down a block here with some barrels down below like so. And then on the other side, put some hoppers facing into these two barrels. Then next to these two hoppers here on the inside, we want to place down two pieces of glass. Then on top of that, place down two comparators facing out of the hoppers going into these two blocks here. These two blocks have to be solid, otherwise this won't work. Then underneath those two blocks, I'm going to go down and place down two pieces of terracotta and do the same beneath the glass. Then on all four of those blocks, just place down some redstone dust. Then underneath these two blocks here, I want to place down two crafters facing this way and then two more facing the other way back into them. And then in these two crafters underneath the blocks, I want to place in some iron ingots. So this item inside here has to be an item that can be crafted in and out of itself. So this iron ingot will craft into nine iron nuggets and go into here. And then those nine iron nuggets can craft back into an iron ingot over here. There's plenty of blocks you could use for this, like copper blocks or slime blocks or gold ingots. But I usually like to use iron since it's not that hard to get. Another thing I should note is that if you are in Bedrock Edition, you will not need to use crafters, you can just use droppers here instead. Then on top of these two crafters here, just place in some repeaters facing this way, and then have these face into two blocks here with redstone torches that go underneath these barrels. So these barrels here will act as the storage for any used tickets by the machine. So when a ticket goes in, it'll just get put into here for collection later. But if you don't want your tickets to be stored at the roundabout, what you can do instead is just replace this with a dropper and that can then send the tickets down below to either collection system or just to get destroyed. But I usually just use barrels. So now let's get into making the reset line. So underneath this detector rail, I want to place down a block here and then make a little L shape like so. Then in this bit here, just place down a glass block or a top half slab or any other transparent block. And then on this bit here in the last corner, just put a raised bit of terracotta like that. And then facing into this block here, put a comparator and then another one facing the other direction next to it. Then on the three remaining spots, just put in some redstone dust and that will make you a pulse extender. Then underneath this raised block, want to place down a block like so with an air gap in between. Put a redstone dust on that block and then underneath this glass, just put a redstone torch. And then underneath this torch, I want to put in a block with an air gap above and then just three more blocks down like this. Then on all of those blocks, just place some redstone dust. Then finally, underneath these two crafters here, just add in some target blocks. And that is the reset line installed. So the next step would be to connect up the item filter to the track switches. But before I do that, I want to first copy these exact same modules over to each of the four sides. The designs will be exactly the same, just rotated to match the orientation. Just use the hoppers and the detector rails as your landmarks and it shouldn't be too hard. So now that all my modules are in, the next step is going to be connecting up the filters to the track switches. So let's first start with this crafter here. The way you connect it up is just place down four blocks like this with a comparator coming out of the crafter, going into a repeater with two redstone dust. That is now the forward track switcher linked up. Then to connect this crafter, place down a block here next to this target block with a comparator coming out of it. Then have it go directly into a block and then make a line of blocks that goes over to here till it's in line with this bit here. Then just add in redstone dust along here before having it go up by two blocks with a redstone dust and a repeater. 
Uh, something to note is that we are using the crafter being filled with iron nuggets as a way of getting a power signal of 9 out of the comparator. But if you are in bedrock edition and using droppers, you will need to add in a repeater facing out of this block like so. So now I want to copy the same design to all four of the sides. It will make it easier to program default directions with this as a basis. So let me quickly do that and I'll get right back to you. Okay, so now that all of the redstone is in at the bottom, we can now get into doing some test runs. So I need to make a set of tickets. Now for tickets, I usually like to use either renamed iron nuggets or renamed pieces of paper. Though we have been experimenting with using banners, but uh, I'll show you that another time. So above each of these exits, I've just put in a letter just to give us reference as to which exit is which. And I'm going to make a ticket for each of those exits. So A, B, C, and D. So you can name your tickets whatever you want. Just make sure that there are no matching tickets between different junctions. It can cause some problems if there are any duplicate tickets. So it's just best to have every ticket be its own unique name. So let's get into programming the hoppers. So this is going to be for the basic system with no special default directions. This will just be going left by default and then the tickets will take you to the forward and the right direction. So the hopper on the left is going to control going forward while the hopper on the right is going to control going to the right. So in this left hopper I want to place in 22 of the corresponding ticket. One in each slot and then 17 in the first slot. In this case it's going to be the A ticket. Then for the other one, I want to do the B ticket. So the same thing, 22 tickets, one in each slot, 17 in the first slot. So let's do a quick test of this. With no ticket, it should go to the left. Yep. With an A ticket, it should go forward towards the A. Yep. And then with a B ticket, it should go to the right. There we go. So now let's program this one over here to have it so by default you will go forward. So we're going to be hijacking a signal off of this pulse extender. So on the right here, we're going to place down a block with one underneath, get rid of that top one, and do the same down here to get these two blocks in this position. Then just put a redstone dust here with a comparator facing out of the block and set that to subtract mode. So to make this default forward, we want to first start by removing these two blocks down here. And then putting a block raised up here with a redstone dust running into the side of this comparator. Then we want to have two blocks coming out of this comparator like so. With redstone dust on top. And then just place a block above this redstone dust here so the two signals don't get crossed. So now without a ticket it should go forward. Yep. And then now we just need to set up the hoppers to be the correct direction. So the one on the right will control going to the right. So this is going to be the A ticket. There we go. While the one on the left will now control going to the left. So in this case, I want to have a C ticket like so. So now if I put in a A ticket, it should just go to the right like normal. Correct. But if I put in a C ticket, it should override the default direction and go to the left. There we go. Perfect. So the reason it does this is the same as the T-junction I designed recently. So when a ticket goes through the item filter, it will power this crafter over here, which will run redstone into the side of this comparator. And because this signal is greater than this signal, it will basically cut off the comparator and will basically just do nothing. And when the system does nothing, it will go to the left. So let's do the same thing over here on this one. But in this one, I want to make it so it defaults to the right. So I want to do the same thing where I have a little diagonal bit here coming off the side with redstone dust here and then a comparator on subtract mode. But I want to do something slightly different on the side where I want to have both of these blocks be raised up like so with redstone dust going into both of them. Then I want to have a repeater going into this block here and then just remove this block down here. Then I want to put a block in front of this comparator and then one here with redstone dust on both of these. And then a block above this redstone dust here to stop these two lines from connecting. And that should now be set up. So without a ticket, it should go to the right, like so. And then now to do the tickets, the hopper on the left will still control going forward. So I just need to put in a C ticket here, like so. And then now the hopper on the right is going to be the one that goes to the left. So I just need to put in a B ticket here. So now if I put in a C ticket, 
it should go forward. And then with a B ticket, it should go to the left. And once again, that works the exact same as that one over there. It just now has two of these inputs rather than one. And it works all perfectly fine. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I always kind of struggle when it comes to explaining the default directions and stuff. It is a little bit of a weird wrinkle when it comes to the system. But once you get to play around with it a bit, it should start making sense. And we are done. That is all of the redstone sorted. And I love it. It's amazing. So I hope you all enjoyed. I, I love this design so much. If you'd like to see the rail being built in a practical scenario, like in a survival world, you should check out my backyard series as I'm doing a full server-wide rail network over there and I am loving it. It's so much fun. And if you make any cool designs, I'd like if you posted it to my Discord server. I have a channel dedicated to the rail network over there and I love seeing all the designs people come up with. There's some super cool stuff in there. And that should be it. So I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!